Hi and welcome to the Azam Shark channel on YouTube. I'm your host Mohammad Azam presenting you another screencast on iOS development. And in this screencast we are going to see how we can implement a grouping in UI table view. Now if you are unaware of what the grouping uh, looks like, just open up your iPhone and go to the, your contacts application and you'll see that each of your contacts, if its name is Alex, then it will come under A. If its name is Chris, it will come under C and so on. So it's arranged by alphabetical order. Okay, and we're going to uh, do something very similar. So let's run the application and this might be a little bit long screencast. Um, because there are so many things to cover in this. So you can see I have different names over here uh, and we are going to arrange it by the first name Mohammad Azam, then we have Chris Tucker, uh, you know, Low Alex, and then uh, I don't know, Tom Hanks, and then uh, Mask Zorro. Okay, all some weird names except mine. Um, so we already know how to display the table view and if you don't really remember how to display then check out the previous screencast I'm pretty sure I've already covered that how you can display data in uh, normal UI table view control okay so right now what happens is that I call this get customer service and it returns me an array of customer objects if I go over here you can see so everything is hard-coded okay and I add everything into a customers NS mutable array and then I return it so I capture it right over here, customers. So we need some sort of a method which will go ahead and which will, first of all, which will um, take out all the alphabets or and put it into array, okay? Which will indicate that uh, what are the different letters and that will become our sections. Right now, if I run this application, you'll see that there is no section available. It's just a normal, uh, UI table view there's no partition going on okay so that particular method I'm just going to copy paste it and we'll go together it uh, explaining how that method actually works so let me go ahead it's called process for table view and I'm just going to copy and paste it over here and we'll go each step and see what the process for table view is actually doing and uh, if you want to do you are going to say self process table view I mean process for table view and customers now one thing I do like to inform you is that there are much better ways of I guess doing this stuff because if you're doing this multiple times then you won't be copy pasting this thing okay so extract it out to a different class or what you can do much better I think a uh, solution will be to create a, your custom uh, grouping UI table view controller okay which have some functions to group the data uh, according to the fields that you send in so let's say what it does so process for table view will take the customers and this is just a normal NS mutable array with the customer objects now the customer object has the first name and the last name what it does it goes through the array right over here okay the loop is going on and it gets the first character of the first name so in this case, if we're talking about Chris Tucker, it will get the C and it will go over here. It will get the C over here. Okay. Now, corrector index, as you can see over here, is defined right over here. And this is a NS mutable array. And the only purpose of corrector index is to hold the number of sections, the number of partitions, basically, and the number of groups any word you would like to create so there will be one group for the letter a okay if there's someone uh, belonging in a okay uh, and then there will be one group for letter c for people who whose name starting with c then one group for h uh, for people whose uh, name is starting from h so all of these letters will be stored in the corrector index Corrector count, on the other hand, is a NS mutable dictionary. So corrector count is going to have a relationship between the first corrector and how many entries are found. Now, once again, there are so many different ways of doing the same job, uh, but we are taking like, you know, the 
pretty much a very plain approach. So count, the character count will kind of look like this. Uh, okay, so we have A, so that will be the key, and it can say, okay, two. So that means uh, the character A contains there, there is there are two customers whose first name starts with the letter A. Then C can be one, H can be one. Okay, so all of this means it will be or all of these things the key value key value will be stored in the character count or char count. Okay, uh, the key for of course the character count will be the first character and the value in this case will be the number or the number of times that we have found that particular character. And this is of course the first time when we are initializing the character index uh, and then what we are going to do is a character index with this one particular letter and then we are going to add those things. So if we found if we have Alex and then we have also I don't know, awesome as the first name, then we are going to add it over here. What else happens over here is the we sort the character index, okay? So when you do want to display the uh, on the screen, when you do want to display that different sections, okay, or different groups, you do want to display them in the alphabetical order. And we have used this particular approach. We are saying this is an NS mutable array and sorted array using descriptors selector and then localized case insensitive compare we're going to do that and then it will automatically sort us in the ascending order which means that the uh, names customer first name starting with the letter A will be the first and then B and then C and so on basically in alphabetical ascending order number of sections in table view Okay, it's not one, and we just covered that who is uh, where all these sections are being stored and why we are using the corrector index. And you are correct because the corrector index array is responsible for storing the number of sections uh, that we have. So we are just simply going to say corrector index and count. That's going to return the number of sections, number of groups that are available. Then we have number of rows in section, okay? And number of rows in section can be a different thing because now we need to get the corrector and then we need to search for, uh, or, or basically we need to find out how many rows are in each section, okay? So we're going to say an string letter and then we are going to say corrector index and then object at index and we're going to say section uh, here we go and then now we're going to return uh, the number of uh, rows basically and of course the corrector count the purpose of the corrector count was to uh, store the number of uh, of rows right a number of customers whose name are starting with a particular letter. Then we come down to the title part and it says that the title for header in section right now it's returning blank it doesn't really have any tech, uh, any title uh, we can simply change that and uh, we can say let me just copy paste it over here so what we're going to do return is the corrector index because we're just simply going to return A, B, C, or D, or something like that, right? So we're going to do that. I think the, one of the changes that people forget or uh, to make is uh, actually in the, let me go ahead and, in the uh, cell for row at index path met method, okay? Let me run it, let's see what happens if I run it right now. And you can see, so we get the sections C, L, M, T. Uh, so these are the sections that I'm actually talking about. This is stored, these things, the letters are stored in the corrector index. And um, the count, which is like this one will contain two, this will contain one and all that stuff, is uh, contained in the corrector count dictionary. 
okay but right now it's all messed up right it's not really working correctly so what we need to do is we need I'm just going to copy paste it again from cell for row at index path and then you will see that what I'm talking about uh, I'm just going to go ahead and I uh, guess paste it over here let's go ahead and do this and see what's going on okay so we get the letter and then after we get the letter from the corrector index index path in section now one other thing that you need to realize is that if you have a section let's say we're talking about a okay and this is a section section a and it has two rows let's say row one and row two then section b and row one and row two now you need to remember that when you're in section a it will say that the section which is section uh, let me find out um, index of section this will be zero okay because we are on section number zero this will be and then this will be zero which is the row index okay and this will be one and what is what will be this if this is zero index what will be the section b it will be one what will be this three two right and this will be three because we already have zero and one so row one will be two nope this will be zero again and this will be one again okay the rows are assigned based on the section that they contain so if I have another row over here row number three it will be two right or the index will be two so this is a very important concept that you must realize uh, that it's not like the row is this is zero this is one and even if you are in a section B or a different section it, the, it it's not continuous so it's not going to be two three four five six when you reach a new section when you find a new section your row uh, uh, index path for the row it resets to that particular section so it will be zero one two so this is a very important concept okay so what we are doing over here is we get the section, we get the letter. Um, we are saying NS predicate and we are searching by first name, sort descriptor. We are also sorting the alphabet or sorting the first name inside the each section. Okay. And then the filter using a, a predicate, we are going to search and we're going to get the filter uh, array and all that stuff. And let's go ahead and run this. And here we go. So it is actually sorted. And you can see the C, L, M, T, and all this stuff is already assigned in uh, alphabetical order. And another thing you will note is that these are also assigned in alphabetical order. Uh, mask is uh, M, A is more, you know, uh, is higher level or not higher level, but it will come first before it will come before M, O. All right, so this is it. I mean, this is uh, one of the ways of doing groupings or, you know, in iOS development using table view, okay? And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you have to just remember that you have to change the cell for row at index pad because uh, most people, what they do is they just create sections and then they're, this particular code, like cell for row at index pad, uh, they don't change it. They, to think they think that it's going to just automatically work but it's not so you have to change it you have to get the uh, rows which are you know for that particular section and you can do that using NS predicate once again this is only one of the ways of doing this uh, I'm pretty sure there are tons of other ways of doing this and if you have to do this in multiple views in multiple places I, I think it's much better that you encapsulate all these things outside, extract it, take it outside into a different class, and then use it. Okay. Um, hope you like this tutorial, and thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for more.